Hello again everyone and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John and as always, thank you so much for being here. A good topic? Let's do it. What was the most frightened you've ever been? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Right after I turned 21, I went downtown with a group of friends to experience the bar scene. Towards the end of the night, some hothead decided to take it up with me and my buddies for talking to his girlfriend. I really didn't give an F about this dude, so we got up and left. Right as we were outside, we hear an eruption of screams. Back inside, the two bouncers at the door had this guy pinned to the ground. It turns out he decided to follow us outside, and as he was coming to the door, he pulled out a gun. I was scared shitless at the fact that some dude could have shot me over something so meaningless. I still have yet to go downtown at night. My brother got an apartment with three other random guys while in college. One of them was the nicest guy in the world. One was pretty normal, and one was a rich, only child with no social skills. The rich, weird one made things awkward for a long time, but it came to a head one night when we were all drunk, and he pulled a machete on my brother and raised it above his head to swing. I ran forward and grabbed it and started punching him. I still have the scar on my thumb from grabbing the blade of the machete and him falling after a few punches with the machete still being held to both of us. When I was about 16, some buddies of mine and I decided to go jumping off the high rocks on the banks of the Chattachoochee River. It was spring and temperatures were warm enough in the early afternoon sun. I was wearing combat boots, jeans, and a t-shirt and my hippie buddies were outfitted in Birkenstocks, shorts, and Grateful Dead concert tees of varying vintages. Getting to the rocks required that we cross the river, and while the outside temperature was nice, the water temperature in the deeper channels was pretty damn cold. I made it about halfway and was struggling due to the jeans and boots when my legs and arms started to numb and I was having a hard time catching my breath. I couldn't even muster a scream for help. I started to go under, realized I was totally powerless to save myself, and started to panic. I am not gifted enough with language to describe the horror I felt as I realized I was going to drown to death at 16. I owe my life to a teenage friend who saw me go under and dove in to get me, and the sad part is I have completely lost touch with him. Thanks again, buddy, wherever you are. I have the effing douche of a neighbor living behind me. He bought this really nice small forest that my brother and I used to play in and knocked down every tree just to be able to build his house. He's got two huge dogs that he always keeps outside, and they have an electric fence that they break through all the time. My little sister, who's about 12 years old, was walking one of our small dogs, and our neighbor's dog ran up and started to attack my sister, as in, pin her to the ground, trying to bite her throat and kill her. Luckily, I was driving around the corner after testing for my driver's permit and jumped out as I saw my sister screaming. I tackled the dog off and tried to fight him off for a good five minutes before anyone in my neighborhood realized what was going on. When I said this dog was big, I meant big, so I was afraid, number one, that my sister was bleeding out, and number two, that I was going to die trying to save my sister. Oh, and why did the driving instructor not get out of the car or call for help? Well, he's afraid of dogs and he was distracted by my sister and I almost being effing dog food. My freshman year of college, I took the subway with a friend downtown to do some shopping. On our return trip, I remember leaving the subway car and walking up the stairs to the sidewalk level. I remember that it was really dark underground and really bright outside. I remember reaching the sidewalk at the top of the steps, but I don't remember stepping off the curb to walk across the street, Market Street in University City, Philadelphia, really busy street. I can only assume that I blacked out, kind of, but continued walking, I don't know. All I know is that I came to, standing in the middle of the crosswalk, my friend looking at me from the opposite side of the street. I hear a really loud noise and I look to my right to see a car barreling down the street, easily going 60 miles per hour heading right toward me, blaring its horn. I ran as fast as I could and made it to the sidewalk just seconds before the car passed through the intersection. My friend never noticed I stopped walking across the street until he heard the horn, the minutes following, when I thought about what could have happened to me were terrifying. Even when I think about it now, it still scares me. It also didn't help that some spandex-clad dude on a bike rode past me and scoffed. Well, someone said their prayers today. I got carried off into the ocean by a riptide when I was around 8 years old or so. 
I didn't know how to swim at the time. It was terrifying. I was screaming and screaming, but nobody was even looking. I couldn't take my eyes off my mom, who was standing on the beach but couldn't do anything. The water was probably 12 feet or so, and I kept getting pushed all the way to the bottom. Two lifeguards in training came out to help me, and they were having trouble in the current too. Then another lifeguard came out with a flotation device and got the three of us back in. I learned to swim shortly after this incident. My uncle and my aunt almost drowned right in front of me in Maryland. My family and I were on vacation near Ocean City, Maryland with our extended family along for the ride as well, and so we were all staying in one big house together. We decided to go to the beach one day, and my aunt and uncle were out a bit further than everyone else. We didn't really think about anything of it, but then they started waving. Of course, we just thought they were actually waving at us, so we waved back, but then the waving became more frantic. I don't remember who, but finally one of us realized they were waving for help. Suddenly the situation went from fun to dire in about 10 seconds. We just saw them drifting further and further out, and there was nothing we could do. My brother and my cousin tried to jump in to help them, but I had to pull them back so they wouldn't get caught in the undertow themselves. There was just this immense feeling of helplessness just watching them slowly shrink out into the sea, and nothing we could do since the lifeguards were nowhere to be found. Suddenly, and this is the most surreal thing ever, a guy who's not even a lifeguard shows up out of nowhere, rips his shirt off and swims like an Olympian out to both of them. He manages to get my aunt first, and then my brother and cousin take her and drag her onto the shore. He then goes back out into the water to get my uncle, and we all drag him on land. By this time, the rest of my family was there, since at this point it had only been me, my brother, and my cousin watching this unfold. We explain everything to them, and they start to freak out. Luckily, someone had the foresight to call an ambulance, so my aunt and uncle were taken to the hospital for exhaustion, and they're both perfectly fine now, just a little shaken. Now, you remember the guy I told you about who saved them? Yeah. We never found out who he was. He just disappeared after he dragged both of them out. He had no friends nearby, and we don't even know what he was doing there. I don't want to sound corny about angels, but that was just the most insane thing. To just have some guy come out of nowhere, save two lives with absolutely no effort, then take no praise or acclaim and just dissipate. I had two botched surgeries and developed pancreatitis, which landed me in the ICU for a week. Septic shock was also involved. I had 25 to 50% chance statistically, but I did not know that at the time. In fact, the part of that whole story that is the most frightening moment of my life was the fact that I'm American. I was in an American hospital, and I was more afraid of how I would pay for the bill than whether I lived or died. Your sentiment is well received. As a fellow American, the threat of financial ruin is ever present when it comes to a medical decision, which is terrible. But, you know, I'm sure they'll make changes for the better tomorrow, right? Probably when I was at a gas station and this crowd of thugs, youths, loaded their arms with beer and made a run for their pickup. The clerks tried to stop them, and I and some other customers started to help, but the thugs pulled out baseball bats and knives and chased us back into the store. In the melee, a clerk got beat so badly that he had to be airlifted to a hospital. I was lucky to get out unscathed. Thugs coming at you with knives in my sheltered life, that was about as bad as it's gotten. Something about having no refuge, but a crappy convenience store was scary as hell. I live in a tornado alley, so I am somewhat used to tornado warnings, but have never actually had any close calls until recently. We were looking at houses about 15 miles from home, and the sky was a little cloudy, but nothing out of the ordinary, not even raining. As we were driving through a neighborhood, we heard the tornado sirens going, but couldn't believe it. We decided to drive home and got on the highway. Right about then, the sky opened up. The rain was coming down so hard that I couldn't even be sure where our lane was on the road, much less what was in front of us. We were on a highway with two lanes going in each direction, separated by a grassy median. I was in a Honda Accord and figured I did get stuck if I tried to turn around through the median. We were going about 10 miles per hour, and we were starting to panic. We argued about what to do, stop, try and turn around, get out of the car, etc. The rain turned into hail and we really started to freak out. The hail was huge. It had to be golf ball to baseball sized. When the big ones hit the car, they sounded like gunshots. I shoot a lot, trust me, just like gunshots. The windshield was shattering in areas where the big ones hit. 
The rain started to abate slightly, and I could see huge pieces of debris and hail blowing sideways across the road. We knew a tornado was close, but wouldn't know it until it drove right into it. I was sure we were going to die. We get home, and I was pretty upset at my dinged up car, but we were pretty happy to be alive. There were about five or six tornado touchdowns in the city, and a lot of buildings had been destroyed. I grew up on a farm, and one night I was in the kitchen watching Whose Line Is It Anyway? I heard a noise out in the garage, and I thought that one of the dogs must have gotten into the trash or something. I opened the door, stepped out onto the wooden steps that lead into the garage, and flipped on the light. The large garage door, the one that the cars drive through, was open. Standing only a couple of feet in front of me, I couldn't see her in the darkness, is one of our horses, except there was something wrong with her. She was covered in a sheen of sweat, and her eyes were wild. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. She was also breathing erratically, and was foaming at her mouth. Me flipping on the light startles her, and she rears up, neighing, and whipping her front hooves at me. I threw myself back into the house, through the open door, and she came down on the step where I had just been, taking gouges out of the wood. I kick the kitchen door shut so she doesn't come in after me, but I hear her going crazy in the garage. There's the sound of broken glass and my parents come running to see what's going on. When we open the door, she has messed up the side of my sister's car and put her head through one of the windows in the garage. She had collapsed amongst the trash cans and is bleeding out onto the floor, but her eye is just wide open and she's frantically looking around. There's blood everywhere. She's trying to get up but can't. My mom calls the vet. He takes emergency calls. And once we figure out there's nothing we can really do for her, we can't even get close to her. My dad and I run out into the night to see if the fence is down. We end up hopping in his truck and driving through the downed portion of the fence, looking for the other horses, but we can't find them. I remember the panic in my dad's voice as he said, where the hell are the other horses? By the way, my dad loves his horses. We crest a rise in the field, and there in the headlights is the body of one of our other horses, and my dad starts freaking out. Are they all dead? Eventually, we find the rest of them still alive, thankfully. We led them into the barn and go back out to the house, only to find that the vet has come out, but the horse in the garage is dead. They dragged her out, and I had to spend part of the night cleaning up the blood and broken glass. We lost two houses and horses that night. I can't remember if the vet did an autopsy or if my dad sent the horses to UIUC to have one done, but they found some type of poison in the corpses. We never found out if someone poisoned them or if they got into some type of poisonous plant, but we've been living there for years and nothing poisonous has ever grown in the pasture. Pretty effing terrifying for an 11 year old. I can still hear the sound she made. I walked into the garage to find one of our horses going crazy. She nearly killed me, then bled out in the garage. I found another one poisoned in the middle of the night. I was whitewater kayaking, and we were in a group of around eight. It was pretty high river levels on a section that was a grade four. A novice crossed in front of me and knocked my boat. I spun into a fast rapid and got pulled under. It ripped my paddle out of my hands. I tried to roll back up using my hands, but the current was too fast or strong. I pulled out, burst to the surface for air, and just as the boat caught me and pushed me into the trees at the riverbank, my leg got trapped in tree roots. Next came 30 seconds, an effing lifetime for me, of frantic kicking to no avail. In fact, I'd kicked so much that I'd lacerated my legs, but my knee, shin, and spray deck were hooked, and the water was aerated white. A minute or so later, just as everything was going dark mentally, I conceded that this is how I was going to die. One of the guys unhooked my leg with a paddle, cut my deck, and pulled me to the surface. The biggest gasp of air I've ever had. Many beers were consumed that night. I was conscious throughout the entire event. There isn't a day when I don't think about it. The feeling of being trapped underwater and running out of air is by far the most frightening experience I've ever had.